Y location, and then a byte indicating what type of thing to draw, and then one or two zero or one bytes um, of arguments for that, and then it uses that byte into as a offset into a jump table and calls a function to draw something on the screen representing whatever it is. So there's a function for drawing hills and a function for drawing clouds. So and it's why you didn't port it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be some more work, yes. So I'm gonna try and get back on the network right here real quick for the next thing. After this, which I hope will never end. Okay, finite state automata enemies. I promise you guys, finite state automata enemies. Um, everything in the Boulder Dash universe is um, the the enemies and the the objects in there, which are subject to its little physics system, don't exist outside of the tiles on the screen memory. Every bit of intelligence contained in the enemies. And, and all of the behaviors, uh, all of the memory re related to the, the state that the behaviors are in or what they're doing is contained in the, in the tiles on the screen. Um, so I've got, I've got this, this buffer of tiles uh, that I iterate through, which is the same world that Mario exists in. And I go from the bottom of the screen up and from the left to the right on each and I find out which tile is currently in the map. And, uh, well, you've seen the firefly. I haven't seen the bullet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're actually doing levels now. But that wasn't cheese grater. It's not that one. So, yeah, these, the, Uh, these get copied right into a two-dimensional array, just verbatim. Um, well, almost verbatim. So the W in there corresponds to the W that this thing is looking for there. Okay, fireflies. So the firefly likes to cruise around the edge of the thing, and then when it runs into certain things, it blows up. So, but there's actually four different icons that are the firefly. They look identical to each other. They all have the same piece of graphics, but there are four of them. One of them is the first one is the one that's moving left, the second one is the one moving up and right and down, and uh, the thing will continue in the direction it's going if it can. Well, first, if it runs into me, and uh, this code was actually jacked from uh, some JavaScript, um, but if it, I'm up, down, left, or right of him, and then it explodes, which is recursive, um, Of rocks falling on fireflies, for example, because in the rock handling logic, it looks for fireflies or other things that are exploitable. Um, if it's empty and then it uh, oh well, the first thing that it does is it tries to turn left and then computes a new direction, which is left of its current direction. Um, if the space to its left is empty um, and then it turns left and goes there. Um, otherwise. If the direction that it's currently going, the space in the direction it's currently going is empty, and then it goes there. But when it goes somewhere, um, I'm replacing where it was with a space. I'm assigning a space in there. But which firefly goes there is computed from a table of which is left and what's right. So if I have a firefly that's going right, and there's a space above it, it will turn into the firefly that's going up. And that's, that's all the intelligence that it needs to continue circling around the edge of the level. Um, all the enemies in Super Mario Bros. 3 are similar. Um, no, they're not similar. They're kind of similar. They're not entirely contained in memory, but each of them only has a byte or two of state data uh, in addition to the location on the screen that keeps track of what they're doing. Is there a timer counting down before uh, the Paragoomba starts flying again? Uh, whatever. Um, is it heading towards you right now? Is it heading left or is it heading right? Um, in each case, 
other things can act on it and it can change its state or it can run into different conditions and change its own state. But the simulation of enemies is, is just a simple rules machine where you have, you're have you currently executing one rule and maybe under certain conditions you start executing other rules. No love. I think I might have to uh, get one of the home built, one of these. Hey, let's look at some joystick opening code that doesn't work. <laughs> oh, uh, of interest to the state machine, there's a table here of rather uh, the first two are concerned with Mario. Um, I ripped out the 6502 that does the same thing and stuck this look up in here instead. Rather, you can enter it from the bottom and sides, um, and rather, you can enter it from the top, the top solid, and then you land on it. Um, rounded affects how boulders roll off. Um, explodable means that if a firefly hits it, up. Consumable means it gets used up in an explosion. Um, sprite sheets. That's we'll talk about that in a minute too. Yeah, this always happens when I start writing Perl, but I've got three thousand four hundred lines in one file happens when you don't keep your house tidy. So I got this problem with this laptop. It's got a touch screen, so when it tries to open the first joystick, it's actually opening the touch screen. I got this stupid little hack in there to try and work around that. Hey. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't die, man. <laughs> Don't scare me. This is what I really wanted to do. I didn't actually want to talk to you about games. I just wanted to sit here and play my hacked up Mario while you chatted on I don't know what. I made this level, e I spent about two hours last night making this level easier and easier and easier. <laughs> no, too late, way too late. Get it, get it, get it. Oh. Oh, oh, no, well, what I want to do is, that's the exit, you can't see it very well, so if I can drop boulders on him, <laughs> while he's on top of the bricks there, I can blow a hole through the bricks and get to the exit. And also, that's not the ideal block to try and hit. And apparently I need the select button to restart the level, because right now control C is I'm doomed, kill yourself. No. So I hit the wrong one. I don't need to destroy boulders. Oops. Oops. <laughs> well, one way to get to the exit. <laughs> oh, but that's going to get me.
<laughs> yeah, well, Brock's levels are less obnoxious. I might have to. <laughs> Dying was a fact of life. I uh, I'd like to try that. <laughs> there, are, there are hundreds of Mario clones, but Kathy Kors was the only one that I saw for Pearl. He gets away unless I really land on his head and get away. I think I'm, I think I'm being premature. I think I need to chill a bit. Oh, that's no good. If we have some time left over, I'll come back to this. Um, in, the, in the finite state automata, rocks, if they're on top of something else that is marked rounded, they'll roll off the side. Um, there's sand that... Uh, Uh, kind of like rock, except it spreads out more and it doesn't kill you when you land on it. And uh, oh. um, dirt itself, it finds um, uh, the body of it. And if any part of the body of the dirt, if any of the, the connected or touching tiles are supported by anything, it stays up there. Um, the wood blocks, you have to, there has to be something on, piled up on one of the. Uh, the sides of them, so as long as there's something um, above or below, directly below, below left, below right, they will, uh, they will stay up. You can dig in the dirt if I could take that out and manage to escape. But all of these, all of these uh, different behaviors were just coated with keeping some state in the, and then a rock falls on me and die if I do that. Um, uh, just keeping track of the state. The boulders go from a stationary boulder to a falling boulder. When they're stationary boulders, they don't kill you when you blow them. When they're a falling boulder, they do. Um, they only turn into a falling boulder when they notice there's nothing below them. Um, but they both, both of them have the same icon on the map, but there's actually two different things, and just that one bit of data, which boulder they are, is, encapsulates the, the dynamic part of their behavior. Simple, simple finance. Now, maybe my presentation software go. Is that it? Looks like it, but there's nothing there. I'm dead. The reason I see my ship is I'm dead. But when you die, you only see the asteroid that killed you. It takes too long to switch modes. I die before it. Okay, well, if you tell it, if you have a, a real X terminal and you, oh God, I'm alive, help. Um, you. Uh, oh, fuck. I can't. Well, everything moves relative around me, so my, my main hope is, yeah. Um, 
So you're probably familiar with the, the DEC VT100 or VT220 terminal. Which what? Uh, 2003, Slow Asnet 2003. Um, this is company Tektronix. It's known for their. Yeah, that's kind of pretty. So while DEC was making these terminals that display text, Tektronix was making these terminals. Graphing uh, for CAD, CAM, and visualization, stats, whatever. Um, it's a company that makes oscilloscopes. I'm going to die. Um, something that makes uh, oscilloscopes. Oh, there's only one player in the game still. Um, no one's telling it to port 2 2003 on slowass.net with the real X terminal. RxVT doesn't work. Mark Lane has cut this logic out. Um, so yeah, Digital Electronics Corporation is making this thing displays text, they're making this thing displays graphics, but X-Terminal that comes with Unix has an emulation mode for Tektronix. Still only one player. Um, oh, okay. And then if you want to respawn, you have to disconnect with control right bracket and then C and uh, that's the board that's still there. Um, so, uh, with the Tektronix terminal, which the thing emulates, you can draw vector graphics over Telnet and read mouse position. Um, and it's this, this beast from the 70s. It's a, it's a fridge-ish. Okay, it's a large dorm fridge pedestal terminal. It, it doesn't have a computer in it. And Max emulate this thing, too. Uh, that's not SCL, but if you make vector games, if you make line drawing games, put them on the internet, and no one will play them. <laughs> not even if they're a cooperative multiplayer. Um, so Asteroids sign is is big. A few things that I do. Um, one of them is random asteroids. Actually, this is just the draw routine. Um, this is part of one of the methods where, where each object knows how to draw itself. Um, but I start with the shape of the thing. The shape is interleaved um, in an arc, uh, a length of distance along the outside of the thing, and a radius. So I'll have a large radius, and then I'll have an arc to a smaller radius, and then I'll have an arc to a larger radius, and then an arc to a smaller asteroid shape and it's really easy to rotate um, because all I have to do when I start it is pre-add some to the arc um, so I uh, pick the arc well I, I incrementally add the arc from picking up the shape and then I take the radius off so I've got an arc and a radius um, I compute my x and y from cosine and sine uh, feeding the arc um, and multiplying that by the radius. I have a two-dimensional rotated shape that I've rotated myself. Um, asteroids have um, a momentum for X and Y, and they also have momentum for spinning, and uh, that momentum just gets added to the starting arc each time. Um, this is computing the random shape of the asteroid. Flip flop that goes back and forth between zero and one, and uh, I use one of two different little expressions for picking a random number depending upon it. Um, one of them tends to generate larger, the other tends to generate smaller. Um, I take a tally of the total radius, which is over 360. I add whatever's left and stop drawing, and uh, then I have an arc that tends to kind of a um, what do you call it? Just a just a bump in distribution. Um, and I just keep adding those, the alternative radius, radius and arc to the thing until I'm done. Um, when I animate stuff in this universe, um, the velocities are random, but they're computed when you bust something, otherwise they're random to start with. Um, so I just add my velocity to the x and y. I promised you gravity too, but you're not going to get that unless I take it out of Super Mario. 
Morse code. Um, my rotation, I have a rotation velocity, I just add that in, and that uh, again affects where I start drawing the thing. Um, my shift is one of these shapes too. It's, uh, it's not randomly drawn, it's hard coded. Um, my nose is 10 pixels out, the top of the back fin um, is. Back and then eight for the other back fin, and then back around to your nose again. Um, so I've got an arc of 140 degrees between the nose and the back fin, and an arc of 40 degrees to the back, and so on and so forth. Um, the same function that draws the asteroids draws the ship. When an asteroid breaks up, by the way, uh, Kessler, Angle, Mario, Chrono, Bolsar, in Gist, so on GitHub, and all of my projects are in Gist. You know, they might as well be because I just pulled my code in one big file that goes on forever. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I kind of figured, but I, I don't think you actually told me. Uh, um, adding thrust, similarly, we're just kind of separating out the X and Y parts and tallying them up. Oh, collision detection. We didn't talk about this at all. Shit. Okay, you guys got ripped off. Okay, well, code games, do it for the lulls. Thank you for, thank you for your time. Love you all. Any questions? I'm in the hall. Uh, no, and it all fits in that bag anyway, so, but thank you. All right, thanks for, thanks for coming, thanks for hanging out. I, uh, I think I'm gonna get some beer. Is that, uh, is this the last talk of the day, or is there another one? Yeah, it's the finishing Oh, okay. So, next building then. Okay, I hope I didn't make people late for that. Might miss Bim versus Emacs. It's going to be a lot. It's only five minutes. It could be less. They were having trouble finding Bim. People didn't use it. They just were willing to pay off. I think Emacs people are just tired of talking about it. I think they're. I'm tired of hearing about Vim. I'm an NVI user. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Nice to meet you. I'm Garu. Oh, <laughs> I was kind of hoping that uh, you and Kvikor would uh, would help fill in some content. <laughs> not a not a big deal. <laughs> you, you were disassembling stuff, so <laughs> I mean, we would much rather let you roll it your on your own. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's good to meet you, even if you didn't uh, raise the level of quality. <laughs> I mean, we didn't get to talk about the, the, the sprites thing, so... I didn't talk about the sprites. No, I mean, you, not the, the SDL bits of the sprites. Oh, thing. SDLX yes. stuff. Oh, yeah, that was a slide that I didn't get to. You're right, I did have a sprite sheet in there. And Doesn't really matter. The Mario thing. Have you seen the, the, the Avenger initiative? No. Not the what, what's not the superhero I, I stuff. Have, something much cooler. You you've shown him. <coughs> it's
it's like we're building this layer. This